Hello everyone, this is Arvind. Today we are going to start data structures through C language. Let us first understand the meaning of what we mean by data structures through C language. We need to be clear that data structures is not a programming language. It is a concept of set of algorithms which is used to structure the information. A data structure is a way of storing the data in a computer so that it can be used efficiently and it will allow the most efficient algorithms to be used. And a data structure should be seen as a logical concept that must address two fundamental concerns. The first one is how the data will be stored and the second one is what the operations will be performed on it. So it is not an programming language like C or C++ or like Java or COBOL, Pascal or .NET. A data structure which is nothing but it is a concept of set of algorithms which is used to structure the information. So these are just a set of algorithms what we are implementing and these algorithms use the programming languages like C and C++. For example, in C or C++ languages, we have to write the code or logic to these data structure algorithms. But whereas coming to the Java or .NET languages, they have been given a predefined implementation to all these algorithms what we are going to use. And these algorithms, we call them as collection framework. But now here in C or C++, we are developing the logic that is how we implement these algorithms. So what I mean by data structures is to structure the information while storing. So while storing the information, we are going to structure the data. That is what we mean by data structures. So we know the importance of data structures for every application and nowadays why the Hadoop and data sciences they are ruling the market. The reason behind this is this Hadoop and data sciences they are data processing tools. Because of that the Hadoop and the data science they are ruling the market. In early 1960s itself Many scientists, they have identified the importance of data in future. So in those days only, they have introduced a language like Python language, which is used to process the information much faster. During those days, the people have not known the importance of data analysis. As the population got increased, the information and the data is coming in bulk into the servers and is and it is been getting stored in the servers. So now there is a huge need to process this data, analysis the data and store it and retrieve it at the correct time from the correct place. Because nowadays, as we understood the importance of the data storage and the data processing, Python moved into the picture. So Python, which is a very important programming language, which is used to analyze the data. So my question is when we can analyze the data? When we can analyze the data? We can analyze the data only if it is being stored. So now here our discussion is all about data structures. That is while storing the information, what are the algorithms we need to follow? If we follow those algorithms, what will happen? How efficiently or how effectively we can store the information? And all these things come under the data structures. Now, we are going to discuss about data structures through C language. So we are implementing the data structures using the syntax of C or C++ language. 
So to structure the data, n number of algorithms are processed, and all these algorithms are called as uh, abstract data types. Now again, my question would be, what is an abstract data type? So here, very simple. We can say that it is nothing but it is a set of rules. So here, an abstract data type, sometimes which is being abbreviated as ADT, is a logical description of how we can view the data and the operations that are allowed without regard to how they will be implemented. So. by providing this level of abstraction we are creating an encapsulation around the data so i hope you all know what is encapsulation here encapsulation is nothing but it is hiding of information so the idea is that by encapsulating the details of the implementation we are hiding them from the users view this is what is called as an information hiding so now can you tell me some of the examples of data structure algorithms so we we are going to discuss some of the examples of data structures algorithms generally in every programming language to structure the information we use one data structure concept and of course that does not follow any data structure algorithm but that also uses a one way of uh, storing the information effectively the best example for this is an array so an array is a one kind of data structure where we are going to follow the data structure algorithms but that is all that is we are going to structure the information for storing by using arrays but we will not follow any algorithm so using arrays we can store the information effectively how that we will see now now some more examples of data structures is stacks queues linked lists trees graphs so all these come under algorithms and uh, we also see sorting techniques searching techniques and all these come under the algorithms right now we will see one by one and here algorithms are divided into two types that is uh, nothing but data structures is uh, divided into two types so what are those two types we will discuss now so here the coming to the classification of data structures the data structures can be classified as simple data structures compound data structures linear data structures and uh, non linear data structures so here the third and fourth that is uh, linear data structures and uh, non linear data structures these are the two types of uh, data structures now then what is a simple data structure and what is an compound data structure a simple data structure can be constructed with the help of primitive data types so here i hope if you are having a good knowledge in c or c++ you can understand what is meant by a primitive data type primitive data types are nothing but they are the default data types that is built in data types that is nothing but integer float double character so all these uh, data types are called as an primitive data type so here a primitive data structure which is used to represent the standard data types of any one of the computer languages variables arrays pointers structures unions etc are the examples of uh, primitive data structures now coming to the compound data structures compound data structures can be constructed with the help of any one of the primitive data structures and it is having a specific functionality and 
it can be designed by the user users so these data structures are called as an derived data types because the user is going to develop it and this is been classified as linear data structures and non linear data structures so here the data structure algorithms are divided into two types so what are the two types means the first one is linear data structures and the second one is non linear data structures now let us see what is a linear data structure and what is a non linear data structure linear data structure means the arrangements of elements in an sequential order that is one element is connected to one element such a type of algorithms are called as arrays stacks queues linked lists because all these come under the linear data structures because in these the data structures one element is connected to the other element in a linear form so linear data structures can be constructed as a continuous arrangement of data elements in the memory and it can be constructed by using array data types now coming to the non linear data structures here non linear form means one element is connected to the n number of elements and the best examples are trees and graphs so here the non linear data structures can be constructed as a collection of randomly distributed set of data items which are joined together by using a special pointer tag so here trees and graphs these are non linear data structures arrays stacks queues linked lists and these are the linear data structures so here arrays stacks queues and linked lists are linear data structures and trees and graphs are non linear data structures now first of all let us discuss about the simple data structure array so here what is an array and why they introduce the concept of arrays why simple thing is it holds more than one element and next is it holds only homogeneous elements that is nothing but same type of elements and the next advantage of using an array is it is index based so here accessing becomes faster because processing of elements will be much faster in an array and the fourth advantage of using array is it is also called as an derived data type and the fifth and the last advantage is it does not follow any algorithms so this is the simple data structure that is been introduced in every programming language algorithm now how to access an element from an array for that first you need to declare the array so array declaration for example i have declared an array which is having a size 5 that is the name of the array is arr so int arr of 5 is equal to 10 comma 20 comma 30 comma 40 comma 50 that is what i am doing is at the time of declaration itself i am initializing the values so it is having five elements that's the reason i have given the size as 5 so here we have given some values to these arrays now all these elements get some memory allocation and we can access these elements by using the index values so here you can see that a memory is been allocated and for this it is having the value 10 20 30 and 40 and 50 and each is going to have an index value zero starting with 0 to n minus 1 since we have the array size is 5 5 minus 1 is 4 so the last index will be n size minus 1 that is 4 and the starting index will be 0 now let us consider the base address and suppose that the base address is 
2046. So for the first element, the starting address will be 2046. And for the second element, that is for the first index, the address will be 2048. For the third element with index 2, the starting address will be 2050. And for the fourth element with index 3, the starting address will be 2052 and for the fifth element with the index number 4 the address will be 2054 so can you say why that is we have taken 2046 and the next address became 2048 and the next address became 2050 if you can notice that the 2 is been added to the base address and for this address we are adding to to get this address and for this address if we add to the we are getting because we are considering that the size of integer is 2 so we know that in c we have discussed the size of integer is either 2 bytes or it is 4 bytes so it depends on the compiler what we are using so here i suppose that my compiler which occupies the size as 2 bytes if you don't know what is the size of the integer you can use the size of operator to find out the size of the integer so in this case i am taking the size of integer as a 2 bytes so we know that an array is an internal pointer variable so which holds the base address of the memory block so arr will be holding the base address of the block which is a 2046 so arr the value of arr is 2046 see here arr of 0 is 10 arr of 1 is 20 arr of 2 is 30 the value of arr of 3 is 40 and arr of 4 is 50 but what is the value that is been present in arr means it will be having the address so the base address of the block will be stored that is base address i mean is the starting address of the block the starting address of the block will be stored in the arr so it holds the base address of the block now how to access the elements for suppose i want to access the element arr 3 array 3 so now how will this give the value is in this case arr of arr of 3 value is 40 so now when i call arr of 3 with subscript value 3 how i am going to fetch the value 40 how is that it is going to display the value 40 so it will be giving us the value 40 but internally what is happening means internally it uses the concept of uh, pointers that is how it will be increasing the pointer arithmetic value it is very simple it will be increasing by the size of the int every time so here if you see since we say that internally it uses the concept of pointers it is a uh, internally represented as pointer arr plus 3 now how is that the next address will be getting increased means uh, it is arr pointer arr plus 3 into size of int so here whenever we increase the ordinary variable that will be increased by 1 but whenever we increase the pointer variables using modify operator that will be pointing to the next memory location in the array, array. so now if you see the here it is uh, the base address is 2046 so here you can see the size of integer we are considering it as 2 so it is pointer of arr plus 3 into 2 that is 3 into 2 is 6 so it is pointer arr plus 6 so now if you see that the base address of arr is 2046 so it will become 2046 plus 6 which is pointer 2052 so 
So now what is pointer 2052? See here, the pointer 2052 is pointing to this place, starting address. And what is the value that is being present in that? It is 40. So the answer for this particular thing is uh, 40. If you are now, if you are new to the programming languages, or if you are new to the programming or data structures, we will be accessing an array element using the index number. Once if you are perfect in the pointer concept, you should understand the internal concept. The internal concept is this. That is how it is, uh, how we are able to get the value of uh, 4. So we need to understand the internal concept. That is how it is providing the information effectively. So with the help of some formulas, we can access the information of every array element uh, much fast, faster. Of course, by using the index number. But in the background of every index number, there is a concept of pointers and pointer arithmetic concepts. So here we are using the concept of pointers just to access array of three. Now the concept is here. So this is the advantage of array when compared to the ordinary primitive data types. So here, if it is an primitive data type, so we know that the primitive data types are integer, character, float double. Suppose if I want to declare a primitive data type with uh, for three variables uh, and the names of these three variables are A, B and C. So I have taken the first variable int A is equal to 10 and the second variable int b is equal to 20 and the third variable int c is equal to 30. So a is the variable which is of type integer with an value of 10 and b is an variable of type integer with value 20 and c is a variable of type integer with a value of 30. So here whenever we want to we declare this it is going to get some memory allocated at some location. So here A gets a memory allocation at some allocation. Suppose that uh, it is allocating the memory randomly at the address 2046. So the base address for variable A is 2046. And suppose that B gets a memory allocation somewhere in the memory and uh, Suppose that uh, B is getting the memory allocated at 1024 and uh, C will get a memory allocation and uh, let us suppose that C is getting the memory allocated at the memory location, say 4056. So we can access the information effectively in our programming? No. Here we can't access the information effectively because so whenever we declare the variables, all these variables will get memory allocation at different locations. So one is located at the memory address 2046. Second variable is located at the location 1024. And third variable is located somewhere in the memory at the address 4056. So whenever we declare the variables, all these variables will get memory allocations at different locations. So in such kind of situations to access the information effectively, it is not possible since these are random memory locations. So we cannot use any equations or expressions like what we have seen in the previous case to access the information faster. So this is the advantage of arrays using ordinary variables. So if you are going to declare the variables using ordinary variables, they are randomly allocated. They, they get a random memory allocation. Whereas in case of arrays, they are homogeneous. So continuous memory allocation. And one more advantage of array is we can store n number of a variables using only a single variable. Whereas 
if we go for an ordinary variables for example if you want to store the marks of 100 students then we have to declare all the 100 variables separately so here in this particular case we are declaring three variables and the three variables are declared separately so if 100 student marks are to be entered then all the 100 student marks need to be declared separately so working with 100 variables either declaring or accessing or processing anything is much complex in programming that's why it is better to use an array instead of an primitive data type so this is one type of data structure of course it does not follow any algorithms but using arrays <coughs> we can store the information effectively and we can process the information effectively so now let us see some of the algorithms based algorithm based data structures that is nothing but the to structure the data so one important thing what we need to understand if we have to implement all the algorithms like stack algorithms or Q algorithms, linked lists, trees, and graphs using any programming language, for example, either by using C or C++ language, we should be perfect in some of the areas of C or C++ programming language. So what are those areas? First, functions or recursive functions also. And the second one is we need to be familiar with arrays. And third one, we need to familiar with structures concepts. Fourth one with pointers concepts. And the last one, dynamic memory allocation, DMA. So these five concepts are very, very important, right? That you should know to learn data structure algorithms using C or C++ programming language. Because to implement any algorithm into code, or to store the information in a structured format, we have to follow all these five concepts logic. So write functions, arrays, structures, pointers, and dynamic memory allocations. So hope you are good at all these concepts of C or C++ language. And if you are not perfect, then I will forward the links or you can watch my YouTube channel uh, videos one by one, please go through these videos in the C language uh, in my playlist, in my channel. So you will get a better understanding of all these concepts. And still, if you face any problem, then <coughs> I can clear, you can query me at my mail address, which I will be providing in my description box. And uh, in our next class or next video, we will see how to implement the stack algorithms using the static memory allocation and then by using a dynamic memory allocation. Okay, thank you.